Welcome to Stories Podcast. This week, we are presenting The Goose Who Laid the Golden Egg. To support the show and help us keep releasing new episodes, please visit patreon.com slash stories or follow the links to our ebooks on storiespodcast.com. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Goose Who Laid the Golden Egg. There once was a couple, both rash, young, and poor, who lived all alone on the cold Irish moor. The moorland was wet, it was soggy and low, and only the heaviest peat could they grow. They would farm, cut, and cure the peat for a fuel to burn in their fire and warm winter's cruel, and sure enough they became man and wife, and those old winds of magic came stirring to life. And where those magic winds so stirringly came, things were never quite the same. That old magic landed one bright winter morn on the couple, their clothes all rumpled and worn, as they walked along an old dirt road. High stacks of peat their pet donkeys load. They hoped to trade down at the monthly fair their peat to fill their cupboards bare. Salted pork and a loaf of bread is what I want, the husband said. A leg of lamb with a carving knife may be better, said the wife. They laughed and argued as they made the walk to fill the long miles with their idle talk. And so it was they were fully amazed when they turned and startled, fully gazed, upon the strangest little market stand ever seen in all the land. It had wood of gold and green and blue, held upright by bars, nars, ropes, and glue. Its sign, so bright it lit the moor, read, Mr. Macklin's Magical Store. And in the stand there stood an elf, one would assume Macklin himself, His robes were a grass green, his hat was a cone, his fingers were slender, and his emerald eyes shone. Now Irish elves, they aren't like Santa's kind. They're taller, they're smarter, and far more inclined to cause mischief and mayhem wherever they go, and they strike like tornadoes when magic winds blow. So the couple was weary of this wizardly shop and its elven owner. Still, they came to a stop. They walked up to the stand to give it a view, Nervous, cold, cagey, and curious, too. And Mr. Macklin, feeling that two was a crowd, raised up his head and crowed out aloud, Magical, marital, mystical, memorables, wondrous, widening, wizening, memorables, powerful, ponderous, pliable pieces, all guaranteed to see your wealth increases. So come, be you ugly or smelly or poor, to Mr. Macklin's magical store. The wife giggled loudly, the husband he laughed, and Macklin he showed them the fruits of his craft. He pulled from his stand most many a prize, made with magical hands most cunning and wise. There was paper that fixed mistakes as you wrote, and drinking glasses that, if dropped, would float. A toy wolf that howled, a knife with three sides, and a four-legged land shark that would give children rides. But too many evenings would it take us to say all of the items he showed them that day. Suffice it to say the couple was odd, and when Macklin finished, they knew to applaud. But when he asked them what they'd like to buy, they looked down at the ground, so suddenly shy. "'We're but poor peat farmers,' the husband, he said, "'with just enough money for some meat and some bread. "'And as much as we'd like some self-mending socks or a clock that's all ticks,' "'it had run out of talks. "'I fear that we'll have to be on our way.' to sell all our peat at the monthly fair day. Mr. Macklin, he sniffed, wiped a tear from his eye, looked at the couple and heaved a big sigh. He said, I have no bread, nor meat did I bring, but I do have a wondrous, thunderous thing. And from the back, he pulled out a box, all shackled with iron and covered in locks. He undid them soundly with a tinkle and punk and pulled out a goose who gave a great honk. Forget the fair day, forget the bread and the meat. I'll trade this magical goose for all of your peat. A magic goose, the wife asked. What does he do? Does he turn into bread? Can we cook him for stew? I'm sure not, Macklin answered. This goose is a pet, but as long as you have him, you'll never have debt. The wife looked at the husband. He looked at the sky. Then he looked at the donkey and peat piled high. A magical goose, he said. One we can't eat, and we have to trade you all of our peat? There's no question your magic can't be overlooked, but if we start to go hungry, no, this goose is cooked. But for now, we'll take her, and treat her with care, and we won't travel on to the great monthly fair. We'll trust in your magic, though not trust alone. First you must swear, by earth, clover, and stone. Swear you're no cheat, swear the magic is true. Swear it by fair folk and King Brian Boru. Now elves do love mayhem, this is known and true, 
but not one will break an oath made to Brian Boru. I swear it, said Macklin, and they shook on the deal. But you just remember, she's a pet, not a meal. So the couple went home, the goose on the donkey, both feeling the day had gone a little bit wonky. Back at their home, they made up a little bed for their little goose to rest her little goose head. And just when they finished and laid down to sleep, the goose gave a sudden and startling meep. The wife ran and lifted the goose with great care, and then the couple could only stop and stare. For there was a wonder they could barely behold. Their little pet goose had laid an egg made of gold. The very next night it happened once more, the same sudden meep and the same golden oar. It happened again the night after that, another gold egg, and the goose was still fat. Every night for a week it happened again, and they praised the old elf and shouted, Amen! They talked and they talked of what they would do as their golden nest egg grew and it grew. And as their wealth rose, they rested their feet and swore they'd never again farm their peat. The couple had gold, but they wanted more. A new house in Dublin, and their very own store— the old elf was gone, or so it would seem, so that night the couple came up with a scheme. Rather than waiting for their pet to endow, they could open the goose and get it all now. They took their pet goose that very same night and opened it up under red candlelight. But to their dismay, no gold egg shook loose. All they had was regret and a very dead goose. So you just remember the peat farmer's creed. Always take what is given, never give in to greed. For no more wealth can you hatch, borrow, or beg if you kill the goose who laid the golden egg. The end. Thanks for listening. 